Mesechta Baba Basra Daf Nun, and we're going to begin from Daf Memtes Ahmed Bey's two lines from the bottom. Gufa, we learned previously. Amar Rav, Rav said, "Ein machazikim benichse eishes ish." A husband, a anybody for that matter, cannot establish a chazaka of the possessions belonging to a married woman. It can't be because uh, the reason is we assume that the reason why she didn't protest is because is because the she relied that her husband is going to do the protesting. And therefore, nobody can have a chazaka on the possessions belonging to a married woman. So that's the opinion of Rav. Now we go to Dafnun Amr Aleph. The Dayane Goyla Amri, the, the Dayanim that lived in the in the diaspora, they said, and who is the, the judges in diaspora? They said, is Shmuel and Karna. Machzikin, a person could establish a chazaka if he bought a property from a married woman, he doesn't have to hold on to the purchase agreement forever. He could just hold on to it for three years, and after three years, he establishes the chazaka. So they argue in Rav. Amar Rav, Rav said, Halacha kedayonai goyla. So Rav made an announcement, we paskin like the dayonai goyla. So I, I, I paskin that you could make a chazaka. Wait a second, didn't just Rav say, Amal, that you don't? Amalei Rav Kahana v'Ravasi l'Rav. Didn't Rav Kahana and Ravasi said to Rav, Hadebe mar might say, did you retract your teaching, your your psaka lacha? You said before that if a married woman, you can't make you can't make chazaka. Amalehu, so Rav answered, I didn't retract. The, the there is I do agree that there is a time where you could make a chazaka. Mistavra, Omri, because it's logic. Uh, I agree logically that it could work with the case that Rav Yosef said. Rav Yosef said now. Rav didn't meet Rav Yosef, but the concept of that case that we learned before in yesterday's daf, that even Rav, who normally says, he would agree, in this case you would. And, and therefore, what was the case of Rav Yosef? Rav Yosef says that if uh, someone had chazaka during the time of her husband, and then her husband died. So a guy bought a property from a woman, and then the husband died, Right? And then after three years, so she was a widow for three years, he made chazaka, continued to live on that property. Then even Rav will hold that this chazaka because she was married, she was she didn't have her husband. So she didn't have the excuse that the reason why I didn't make a chazaka is because my I thought my husband would do it. Uh, because for three years after her husband passed away, this guy did made a chazaka. So in that case, even though he bought it when she was an Asian sis, he could establish a chazaka beyond that. Uh, but normally, Rav still maintains his opinion uh, that uh, and he said that the Yoyana Goyla were, were talking about a specific case uh, that uh, we discussed, the Rav Yosef's case. Now we go continue in the Gemara. A woman cannot establish a chazaka on the possessions belonging to her husband. What does that mean? So, if a woman bought a property off her husband, she has to hold on to that purchase agreement forever. There's no such a thing of chazaka. So the and the reason is because we could say we say that the reason why she was walking around the property that he, and he didn't protest because he has to has the responsibility to provide her food. So maybe it's uh, he never sold her the property and he didn't protest because she has a right to walk around all this uh, on on the property, and and because of that he didn't feel like protesting. So therefore, there's no chazaka uh, for a woman with the possession she buys from her husband. So the Gemara asks the question, Pshita, it's very obvious this idea from the Mishnah, because if a woman has a right to walk around her husband's property, she can't as never establish a chazaka, that it's hers. Kevin the Islam Mazainus, since she's required uh, to give her uh, sustenance. Mizaina who took Achlish, she we could always assume that the reason why she was walking around the property uh she, because uh because of uh she's collecting her Mizainus, the fruits, and therefore the husband didn't protest. And says the Gemara like Srika, the Mishnah teaches you a novel idea. The Yikadla Ara Achrita 
she was walking, she, the husband gave her another property from where to collect her mezoinus. And she was walking around this property, a, a property that's not designated for her mezoinus. And therefore, I would think she could establish a chazak as what she's doing on the other property. Uh, the answer is, but her husband doesn't mind if whatever property she walks around, um, even though he designated one property where she should get, collect her mezoinus. But if she happens to walk around a, a, a property not designated for her mezoinus, he certainly he also doesn't mind. And therefore, if he didn't protest, uh, therefore, we could, he could always say, that's why I didn't protest. And and so, and once he has an excuse why he didn't protest, then the woman can never establish a chazaka. So, okay, so you're telling me that a woman must hold on to her purchase document if she bought something from her husband, but it will work. Haraya yesh. If she bought something off her husband, automatically, uh, we will say that uh, the sale is valid. So we ask her, what are you doing on this property? She says, I bought it from my husband, and here's the document that I, I, I purchased it, says the Gemara. But there could be a reason why the husband agreed to sell the property to his wife, because he felt that the, his wife was stealing money from him. And therefore, he pretended to sell the property to her, to her, in order to get back his own money that she stole from him. So maybe the sale is invalid. Lema, let us say, that the reason why he sold the property is just to get back his own money and to reveal that she was stealing money from him. So we should invalidate the sale. And some, some people say that, yes, that would be an invalid sale. That's a good reason. But Shamat Nay, wouldn't you decide from our Mishnah that the opposite, someone sells his field to his wife and she has the document showing that she bought it off her off her husband. Concert. She acquires the property. But I mean, we don't say like Louis who the boy that he's just sold the property and and uh, trying to get back his money that he that she was stealing from him. So we don't invalidate the sale, and we so we don't come up with this idea like Louis Zuze. And so that would you see that idea from the Mishnah? Answer the Gemara. Like, really, a Mishnah would hold you invalidate every sale to a wife. But Ema Horaya Yesh Matana. When could a woman keep her the field? That she said she got from her husband, if she proved that she got it as a gift from her husband, if she got it as a gift from her husband, then we, then we can say that the husband obviously uh, ha ha gifted it to her, and she has proof of that. And there's no other excuse why he would do such a thing unless it's really her property. Amalei Rav Nachman Rav Huna. Nachman said to Rav Huna, "Loy havalar mar gaban boorte. You did not come yesterday at night." Uh, but or yesterday, bithuma. Bithuma is another way to say our base medrash. You didn't show up to the base medrash, which was near the city, uh, because you missed something special. The meaning, mili mal yosu. We said something special. Amale. So Rav Huna asked, my mili mal yosu amrisu. What kind of special thing did you say in this base medrash yesterday? So Rav Nachman answered, we learned yesterday. Hamoicha sodel ishto. If you sell a field to your wife, kansa she acquires it. And we say, even that we don't invalidate the sale, that he just was selling it to her to show that uh, to get his money back. So we never invalidate the sale. Um, I mean, of course, even if you have, if uh, why, why would we invalidate the sale? The, the why would I say you should invalidate the sale because he wanted to get his money back? As soon as he gave her a document that it belongs to her, karka, uh, land, you don't even need a transaction of money because not every not as soon as she gets uh, the deed, it automatically she acquires the property. So there's no excuse of Lagluya Zuse because as soon as he's going to write up the document, it's automatically hers. Dal Zuse if you just subtract or white out the money part of the of the transaction just the tikni bishtara just the star alone just the deed alone the fact that she's holding on to a deed automatically shows the property is hers me like tran didn't we learn in our mishnah the chosim shiesh lamachrayis the chosim that you could put a lien on possessions that you could put a lien on which is another way of saying uh property real estate nickname you could acquire it either because paying money ubishtar or just the deed alone, or, chazaka, or, or demonstrating ownership of the property by or doing repairs on the property. 
So that's what Rav Huna said to Rav Nachman. So what I need to teach, teach that's such a great teaching, it's simple. Amalei, so Rav Nachman says, Vlabit mar lo amashmuel, loi shon al mishtar matona, al mishtar shtecha, loi kona achit and loi domeho. That's not true. You're misreading the Mishnah. A Mishnah is saying that property can be purchased with a deed alone. It's only talking about gifts. But if it's a sale document, it's not if it was, if it's the document says that this property was sold to such and such a person, there must have been a transfer of money. And therefore, if there's a transfer of money, that's that effectuates the sale in a, in a sale. In a gift, you don't uh, you don't have money. It could be a star alone. But it, uh, uh, Shmuel said that star mecha, you need money. And therefore, again, if there's a transaction of money, I would have thought uh, that the husband, that we should invalidate the sale because the husband faked out his wife to, to make this sale so he can get back his money. That's the, that's the novelty of the treatment, that we don't invalidate the sale. Says the Gemara of Allah, Moises Rav, Rav Huna. So Rav Huna asked back. Rav, um, Rav Huna asked back against Rav Nachman. But then Rav Huma Nuna answer, ask a question, but star Ketzat. I have another Bryce that says, how could you purchase a piece of land just with just with a piece of uh, star, just with a paper? Cost of loyal and Nayalacharis, if you write on a piece of paper or on a shard, Alpha Pishain by Shavaru, even if the paper or the piece of pottery is not worth a penny. If it says Sare Mukhura Lacha, I'm selling you my field. So they knew you lacha, you you acquired my field or gifted my field. That's a good gift, it's a good sale. So we see just by writing it on the paper without the exchange of money, it effectuates the sale of real estate. So Rav Huna is, is sticking with his gun. There's no need for money to trans, to to trans, uh, to ex be exchanged, even by a sale. So the Gemara says, so Rav Nachman answered, you, you're asking me Rav Hamnuna's question, but Rav, Rav Hamnuna answered the question himself. Rav Huna answered that question. It's really if you sell any field, any field, you need an exchange of money to effectuate the sale. There, it's a that Brisa is talking about a specific case. He's selling a field because it was totally, you know, washed away. It's an abandoned field. So the guy who's selling it doesn't care about the money so much. He really wants to effectuate the sale. Uh, maybe he doesn't want to pay the taxes on the property, whatever it is. So just by the star alone, it would effectuate the sale. But a normal sale of real estate needs an exchange of money. Ravashi Yama, Ravashi says uh, that that it says Ravashi gives another tarot to Brisa. That Brisa is talking about a gift. He he. It's actually the Brisa is talking about a gift that he's actually gifting somebody the piece of property. Vlama Kosov Loy Bilchoin Mecher. Why did he write a sale? Why did he write a sale on the property that I'm selling you my property? It's talking about a gift and a gift we learned before doesn't need any money exchange, but he wrote it that I'm selling you the property just to, to, to strengthen the recipient of the gift so that if someone will take away the property, the gifter of the property will insure the property and pay the guy back. Uh, so therefore, he wrote it as if he's selling it. But really, that Bryce is not talking about a sale. A sale really needs exchange of money. But a gift, you don't need exchange of money. May survey, another question. Another question. You said, again, this Rav Huna and, and the others said that we never invalidate a sale. Uh, we don't invalidate the sale of someone selling something to his wife, even if she shows the purchase document. With the with the with the thought that maybe Lagluli Zuze Hudabaya, that she that the whole sale was just a, a sham so that he can get his money back. Wait a second, you don't say such a thing. love him in the If a buy guy a guy a master borrows from his slave, and frees him, or he borrows something from his isha, he borrows money from his wife. The wife has her own bank account, and the husband borrows money. The Gershon then gave it a divorce. Ain't a love klum. He doesn't have to pay her back. Why doesn't he have to pay it back? He took a loan. My tama la Don't we say that the reason is because the the whole the whole loan was a sham because he suspected his wife stealing money, so he pretended that he's going to borrow money from his wife in order to get his money back. So we do see that you say this concept of la gluye zuze. You do say this concept of la gluye zuze. So why why don't you say it by a sale? 
when I'm selling, uh, why don't we invalidate the sale with the same idea, like Lui Azuze, who the buyer? Answers the Gemara, Shani Hosum, by a loan, it's different. No person would want to ever take a loan. A man never wants to have loans outstanding. It shows up on his credit report. And therefore, if he took a loan from his wife, so it's, it's, it's most likely that he wants to get the money back and then divorced her. It's probably the reason why he took the loan is because he suspected his wife from stealing money from him. And this was a sham to get his money back. And um, therefore, therefore, he doesn't have to pay her back because we can say the whole loan was a sham. But when it comes to selling a property, sold his wife a property, and uh, his wife received money, then uh, selling, no one forced him to sell something. He's not doing something wrong for selling something. So therefore, we will not say the svar of lagluye zuze hudabaya. So it's, we'll only say it by a loan, but not by a regular sale. Zot the Gemara, new Gemara. Sholach Rav Honum bar Oven, bar Oven. Rav Huna, the son of Oven, sent uh, sent a message to the yeshiva, or to the base medrash. Hamoicha sadal ishtay. A person sells a field to his wife, and she has the purchase document. Kansa, it's 100% works. However, we go to um, Nunalaf, the husband will eat the fruits. The husband will eat the fruits. That means that although he sold it to his wife, but like any property that she owns, she owns, he has the deed, but he could eat the, the, the fruits, the rental income of the property. Baram, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Bro, Chol Amri, every Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Bo and all the Gedolim say, "B'matona bikish in law." He really wanted to gift it to her, so therefore he doesn't eat Paris. So it was almost like even if she shows the document, she paid for it. Really, really, it's it's uh, she didn't pay for it. She got it for, as a gift. Why did he write that he's giving, selling something to his wife? That so that if anybody would take the property from her, he says he's going to insure the property and and actually pay her back. So therefore, Rab Abba and Rab Bo held that she would not eat. He would not eat the Paris if she shows that she has this document that it, that she owns this field that formerly belonged to her husband. So then she gets, she she uh, does not eat the pears. And then and the other Tana, Rabbi uh, Huna Bar Oven, held that she, he would eat the, the fruits of the field. Mesebe comes, comes uh, Gomorrah asks a question, if you borrow from a wife and you divorce her, you don't have to ever pay her back. My time, isn't it, again, the same question. The whole loan was a sham. And therefore, he, he didn't. He wanted to get his money back. So why do we say that the, if someone gifts, sells something to his wife? This is again a question against Rav Bar Oven. Uh, why do we say that if the sell, if you sold something to your wife and she proves it with the document that she gets to keep it? Why don't we say that the whole sale was a sham, the, the sham, because he just wanted to get his money back? Like you see, when he when you when he loans his wife and divorced her, he doesn't have to pay her back because we say the whole loan was a sham, so he can get his money back. Answers the Gemara, Shana Hosom over there is different. Like we said, this is the answer we just said before. It's odd that he would ever take a loan. Uh, it, it puts himself out there so in such a vulnerable way. And therefore, uh, therefore, if he did that, he, we could only say that he he made a sh he he made this loan as a sham to get his money back. But selling a property to his wife, he didn't have to do that. And if he did then it's 100% valid, and we will not say Legaluya Zuze. He's just trying to get his money back. So we're going to continue over here and just a few more lines. Amar Rav, Rav said, If someone sells a, fee, a field to his wife, we will not invalidate the sale. It's 100% it's valid. But the husband can meantime eat the fruits of that field. But if he gifted something to his wife, it works. The, the husband will not eat the fruits of the field. Rabbi Loza, Omar Rabbi Loza says, echadzev, echadzev, konsa. whether you gift a field or whether you sell a field, to your, uh, you uh, sell a field or gift a field, concert 100% works, and the, and the husband will not eat the fruits of the field. Rabbi Loza, Rabbi Loza made, had a situation where, where it, was a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a sale, and he did not allow the husband to continue eating pears. He sold something to his wife. So Rav Chizda Paskin like Rav Lazar. 
the grandchildren of Rav from his daughter. So they asked Rav Chizda, how do you paskin like Rav Lazar and not like my a grandfather, who's a greater person, who said, you left the, the elder statesman, and you paskin like the younger person, Rav Lazar, uh, uh, Rabbi Loza was a student who was a Talmud of Rabbi Yechiden, who was who was uh, uh, less of a mandrega, less of a level than Rav. So why did you pasquin like Rabbi Loza instead of pasquin like Rav? Amalei. So Rav Chizda said, "Vanonami k'Rav Rav Avdei." I pasquin like the great person because he also Rav and Amar Rabbi Yechiden. Rabbi Yechiden said this exactly the same idea. Echad zeh, whether you sell something to your wife, vechad zeh, whether you gift something to your wife, concerts, one hundred percent works. And the and the husband will not eat the fruits. So that's why a paskin like Rabbi Yechon, and, and against Rav. Alma Rava, Rava said, and he says a, a message like this. Hilkasa, I'll give you the final bottom line over here. Amoicha Sadalishte, someone sells a field to his wife, Loi Konsa, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So Omar Rava, Rava said, Hilchas the halacha is, Hamoicha Sodal Ishtay, someone sells a field to his wife, Loi Konse, it doesn't work, because apparently, the Habalacha Paris. But then, it does work, and that the husband could eat uh, the fruits, so the sale is valid. So Nagamar is going to ask, you told me the sale is not valid, and now you're telling me the sale is valid. But Matana, if you gift something to his wife, Konse ve'en Habalacha Paris. If you give something to your wife, it's 100% valid, and the husband will not eat the fruits. So the Gemara asks the question, Tarte, in the first line that Rabbi said, that if you sell a field to your wife, loy cons, it doesn't work. And then you say, in the same sentence, Paris, that it does work, and that the husband will eat the fruits. So the Gemara says, loy kasha, that's not difficult. Kam, but munit. If she purchased the item, and we asked, we don't know where she got the money from, so then we'll invalidate the sale. Khan, well, when the second part where Rabbi said that we'll validate the sale, the monash ain't munim, that she didn't use hidden money. Should we actually know that, you know, her bank account that's been there for years, we know exactly where she got the money to purchase the field. Then we have no reason to invalidate the sale. And in that case, the Rabbi will pass in like Rav, that the field is, uh, the field is uh, sold, is occupied, but the Habal or Chaperis, the Baal will eat fruits. The Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda said and made the, the, the differentiation. If we don't know, if it's hidden money, where she, we don't know where she got the money to purchase the field. Then we'll invalidate the sale because we could say that the whole reason why the husband went through the sale is to get his money back. But if she used money that's, that was never hidden, she always had this bank account for years and we know where the money is coming from. Then the sale is valid. And will not invalidate the sale, but nevertheless, like Rava said, who passed like Rav, the husband will eat peros. Okay, this ends daf nun aleph. I'm, if I said nun, I meant nun aleph.